Welcome back to the final uh, installment of my 2018 All-Star Break uh, demonstration series looking at the ability to predict the winners and losers of baseball games. Today is the final uh, day of the week. It's Friday. Um, kind of still All-Star Break. Uh, the Cubs and Cardinals, I think, played a makeup game last night, so there's been one game so far, but the season really kicks off uh, this afternoon and this evening. So, um, again, what I want to do in this module is to take the results of our models and then run it back through all of the betting line data to see if we'd have made those picks, if we'd have, say, invest 100 bucks or bet 100 bucks, not a very good investment probably, if we bet 100 bucks on every game using the favorites as predicted by our different models, how much money would we make or lose um, based on the different models that we use. So at the end of the last module, one of the things I noticed was that in doing my commits and save and everything that um, things got a little bit of out of whack and I accidentally lost some code. So it's always critical that you save your file um, before you uh, commit it. And so one of the ways that you know in our studio that things haven't been saved is that the file name up here in the, in the tab will be red. Okay. So if you then save it, it goes back to black. Okay. So it, always want to make sure that that's black when you um, commit your code. Uh, the other thing that I commented on in the last tutorial, in the last demo, was that the names had been flipped coming out of the betting site. That Team 1 and Team 2, Team 1 was the visiting team and Team 2 was the home team um, for all those columns. And so I went, and but with everything else we did, Team 1 was the home team and Team 2 was the visiting team. So I went back through and flipped the names of the teams, the scores, and the probabilities they had pulled from the betting line website. Um, and then I went back through and regenerated that file um, that we pulled down from uh, the betting website. The other thing I noticed is that I started getting a lot of timeouts in um, accessing that website with the RVEST uh, read HTML files, read HTML functions. And I suspect their traffic picked up since the baseball game started. So um, I've committed um, the betting data to this repository. So if you're following along, you should be able to get that as well. But if someone's watching this in the future during the baseball season, it might be a little bit difficult to regenerate that. Um, there's probably a better way to um, set up those reads so that if, it's, if you get that 504 error, um, that it'll, it'll keep trying again. But uh, we got it to work, um, and we'll, we'll, we'll be good to go. So all of that now is committed and part of the branch um, that was on this um, as part of this issue for validating the betting line module. So there are a couple other things that I've noticed. Um, is that I, I, as I was going through the code in the last tutorial, I inadvertently would switch back and forth between things like win probability, betting line, money line. Well, it's a money line model. Um, and so I want to make sure refers to um, the money line model. Um, so we need to replace win probability model or betting line model with money line. Okay. So that should hopefully be simple. So that's one thing I need, a bit of housekeeping we need to do. Another bit of um, housekeeping is um, how do we handle double headers? And so um, the way we've been handling this was that we would do all our joins by the date, the home team, the visiting team, and the scores. Now, looking back through the data as I was late awake last night worrying about this <laughs> and realized that there are some double headers where they have the same teams, of course, and the same score. And so when we do those joins, we could get some funkiness with the joins. So we want to add a number, game number, um, that indicates uh, which game of the day was played. Okay, um, and so hopefully that won't be too hard. And then we want to create another issue, which will be to um, run um, predictions through betting data. And so for here, we need to um, we need to do a couple things, right? So we need to convert the money line to a payout. So if you give $100, if you bet $100, 
how much money are you going to get back if you bet on a certain team? We then need to join um, payouts with um, model predictions. And then we need to um, get the annual uh, payouts for each model. And then I want to plot the, um, the cumulative um, winnings, losings for each model over the course of, um, or since, I think it was 2009 that we were able to get the data back, okay? So um, we'll go ahead and submit this. So we've got three issues that we need to tackle today. Um, I'm going to start with the first one of make sure that the code refers to money line model. And so we'll come back and we'll do git checkout money line uh, check out money line fix oh sorry this needs to be a dash b Great job. excellent all right so we need to go through here and this mainly picked up with what we we're looking at uh, in the last tutorial and so if we come down here, so there's money prob, favorite money win, blah, blah, blah. Uh, money prob, that's good. Um, money line, so I have win prob. Uh, or this is the name of the, the data frame, so we can get rid of that. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll go ahead and highlight all of this. And we're running this in R. Excellent. And so, um, so this is the favorite win prob. We really want the money prob. So let's look for favorite win prob. So that favorite win prob. Uh, so favorite win prob, right, was the, um, the data with all of the, um, the other predictions. So that's, that's right. Um, so let's, let's go through this and see what we've got. So we're going to do all this. And so if we get to the end of running this, we see we have favorite money one, favorite money prob. Okay, so that's good. If we save this and run this, and now we look at favorite win prob. Uh, we've got the money lines. That's great. We now want to make it um, tidy. So we had win prob here. We really want money. I'm going to call it the money model. Um, and so that that's good. And so we need to change win prob here. So let me look for win prob. Okay. And so here we have money. 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 And then, oh, there should be money. And then let's search for win prob. So we have, we want um, money line. And so this should also be money line. Great. So if we now run all this jazz, we see we have the money line model, which is great. And then we also have um, uh, the comparison of the predicted versus the observed, where we again have the money line. Okay. So my colors here aren't very contrasting or strong, but I think we got the point that the three models uh, do a pretty similar job to each other, at least between, say, 0 0.5 and 0 0.75. Okay. Excellent. So we made that change. Not a big deal. We'll 
we'll add this, we'll commit it. And we'll say, uh, correct win prob to money closes number four. So I want to double check that that was issue four. Yep, issue four. And also want to double check <laughs> that I've got this saved. So get checkout master, get merge, um, money line fix. That's done. Get push. And we look at this, and we've closed the commit. Excellent. So now we push on to handling double headers. All right, so I think this is gonna get a little bit harder. So if we come back to the top here and we look at game data, um, go to our console, I'm gonna minimize this, and we do game data. Let me just move it up. So why don't we try game data uh, group by uh, date and team one team two, and then I'm going to do summarize um, n equals n parentheses. So this then counts the number of games that were played between these two teams on these dates. Um, there's 200,000 of these. <laughs> um, so I'm going to then arrange in descending order um, by n. And so we see that way back in 1890, <laughs> there were some triple headers. That's pretty intense. Um, and so again, what's happening is here, we take the game data data frame, we're grouping all those rows by the date and the teams. So if there's a date and there's uh, the two teams are the same, then that's kind of going to become its own separate data frame. And then what we do is that with each of those, we then summarize by counting the number of rows in that data frame and then we're going to arrange in descending order. If we wanted to, we could also add an, um, um, an ungroup after that summarize. Okay. So that's, that's a, a good um, model to have um, of, of what we want to do, because what we want to do is we want to add a, we don't necessarily want to add an N, we want to add a, a game number to each of the columns. So we can do game data group by uh, date team one, team two. And then we can add um, game, or we're going to say, um, you know, do mutate uh, game equals one colon n. And then we'll do an ungroup open close parentheses, run that, and we see here at the end is a game column. So to test this, I'm going to do a filter where we do date equals um, this, 1890, and we will then do select date team one team two game yeah. so we need that double equal sign in our filter and what we see is that there are, there's a um, double header that day so LA Dodgers in Pittsburgh, game one, LA Dodgers in Pittsburgh, day two, or game two. Uh, there are a couple other double headers here. And then between the Dodgers and Pittsburgh, um, yeah, that's all right. We had one, two, and three. And there were quite a few double headers that day. I guess back in the day, they used to play uh, double headers quite frequently. So this is, does exactly what we want. So we need to take this code without that filter, and we need to add this to um, our pipe for game data. Oops. Right. 
And so if we run this now to generate game data, we again see everything we'd expect with that game column uh, tacked on at the end. So as we go through here, we need to now include that as part of our join. So this was where um, uh, calculating the, the one probability, um, we're going to add game here in our select statement uh, as we build favorite win prob. Again, if we look at favorite win prob, we now see we have that game column. This is where we calculated uh, the win loss live win losses season, and then this is where we do the join. So we're going to add game here. And we're going to want to add, after date, in our select, we're going to add game as well. Oh, I've got to run all this stuff, don't I? game is missing from right hand side. Ah, that's because up here I need to also select for a game. So this is uh, date game and this should work. Excellent. And so if we look at favorite win prob we're going to have the season, the date, the game, the teams, the scores, the 538 model, uh, the WP Live model, um, and then we're going to also join in the season. And so here we're going to add, um, I guess we don't have game for this, right? So win losses season uh, doesn't have games because that's the, se the record um, at the end of the current season or the end of the previous season. And so if we run this, oh, See a problem already that we need to select the game in this. All right, so we're losing it somewhere. Uh, so if I run line by line here, hmm, favorite win prob is losing the game. Oh, I guess I never ran that. Okay, I'm going to highlight everything going back up to the top. Sometimes as I'm doing this, I know I'm, I'm missing chunks of code um, to run. So that's why it's good anyway at the end of everything to run with a blank slate of variables and a set new session to make sure everything works right. And here we go. Uh, we've got it. We don't have the error message anymore. We've got the season, the date, the game, the teams, the scores, uh, 538, the WP Live, um, the current, and the previous season model. Excellent. So then this is where we get into joining um, the uh, money line data with our current model. This is where we made that name conversion. And we're going to read in um, the data money line and we need to do the same thing here, where we um, we do our, our group by stuff. And um, so I, actually, I'm just going to fly back up to the top here, where I had um, this code. And we're going to come back down uh, to where we were calculating the favorite win probability. And so we want to. Um, Ooh, I found a typo. Team one, team two. So I need to come back up here and change this to team one. And we'll have to rerun everything because I punted that pretty bad. Um, where was I? Flying around too much. Okay, so this is where we read all that in. If we look at that. Uh, we've got the date and we've got that game column over here on the right side. Excellent. And then we want to pipe this into our mutate, where we're going to um, figure out the probability um, and the winner. 
and we're going to do an inner join with um, to, to convert the names and then we're also going to do the inner join uh, to add the game to make sure that we've got the right game uh, for the day okay. and then here we're going to make things tidy and um, I think everything here should be in good shape so if we run this tidy win prop right we've got our game excellent and if we look at overall win prob, I don't think this changes the results very much, right? We still have uh, pretty similar values. Um, the money line does about 1% better than the FTE and does about as well as the WP current, at least in terms of predicting the favorite. Uh, so I'm going to save this and I'm going to source the whole thing. So this will run that whole analysis.r file. Excellent. And so we see uh, that second plot. We can tab here to go to the previous plot where everything kind of has been pretty steady for the last nine years or so, where we have that betting data. Great. So this uh, incorporates the uh, double headers. And so if we save this, uh, I forgot to check out a branch. So I'll go ahead and do that git checkout dash b double header and then we'll do git add analysis.r git commit dash m add game column to reflect double and triple headers closes number five just want to double check that yep number five Get checkout master, get merge double header, get push, and again, if we look here, we've closed the issue. And so, if we look at our issues, we've got the final issue, the one that we're actually worried about and interested in working on today. So, we want to convert the money line to a payout, we want to join the payouts with the win predictions and get the annual payouts for each model. So something that occurred to me that we want to add is we need to know who was the favorite. So um, create a column that indicates which team was the favorite. As we currently have it, we're only saying whether or not the favorite won and the probability that they won. Well, if we want to figure out which team to bet on, we need to know who the favorite was so that we can then extract that payout from the money line data. So I'll go ahead and update this comment. That's great. And so now we're working on issue six. So we're going to um, git checkout dash b, and I'm going to call it betting. Right. And so here we're going to simulate what would have happened if we'd have bet $100 on each game. So one of the things I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to start to break up our code a little bit. Um, the analysis that we've got here I really like, and I want to keep that. Um, and, and I think this reflects very nicely what we've done in the first three days. And so we're going to, um, I'm going to save this tidy win prob. I'm going to do a re write uh, um, CSV. And we're going to ship out tidy win prop, and I'm going to call this data I'll call this data model data dot CSV and that needs to be saved um, put in quotes so if we save that and then we come back to our terminal and then we do ls data we see now that we've got our money line data and our model data. So I'm going to um, git add analysis and then model, I'm sorry, data model.
normal data. So uh, write out data to file. Okay. <sighs> so gonna get add that again, and then I'm gonna do a git commit dash dash amend. And it will open up um, a commit message window, and we close that, and we're good. All right. Always remember to save your files. This is real life. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to now create a new file, a new R script that I'm going to, um, I'm going to steal some stuff from this to make. Uh, and I'm going to call this uh, betting simulation.r. And this is July 20th. And the purpose of this is to simulate how much we make or lose based on betting $100 on each of the favorites from our models. Okay. So we're going to use the tidyverse. I'll leave in Liberdate and Broom. Um, we can leave in Wes Anderson. Uh, we're not going to need our vest. So um, we're going to save this, I said, as betting simulation.r. I'm going to go ahead and commit this. Say initial commit. Excellent. All right. So to do this, um, the first thing that we want to do, as I said in the issue tracker, is that we want to convert the money line to a payout. And so I'm going to go ahead and, um, what did I call this variable yesterday um, for the, the money line data? I guess I didn't call it anything. Okay. So I'm going to call this um, payout, and we're going to read in the CSV, and as I've done in the past, I'm going to keep this separate, and we'll, we'll call it the payout variable later, but for now, let's develop the data frame. So I'm going to want to make this tidy, and some of the things that we also need, we'll need up here is this name convert, um, where we will also do um, uh, some of this. And so I'm going to copy over some of this code, but realize that Ideally, this code perhaps should be in that um, that code file where we generated the um, money line CSV file. It's not very dry, so dry is the idea of don't repeat yourself. So it's not dry to um, to keep things to keep repeating yourself over and over again, and it just makes things a lot harder to interpret. So I'm going to copy this. And I'll go ahead and run these lines um, and actually take this out. And this is what I had down here. And we'll do read CSV, drop NA, and we're going to see what happens when we get this far. So at this point we have the date, the teams, the scores, the money lines, the game, the money probabilities, the probabilities based on that money line, and then um, whether or not the favorite won and the probability of the favorite winning. And um, here then we do the joins. see, remind ourselves what happens here. Score one, score two, all these things. So I think I want to keep uh, team one and team two in. And, oh, that's right, we've got it here. Okay, so we run this, we get the date, the scores, the money line, the game, the money probability, 
for the probability of team one winning, team two winning, um, the fate whether or not the favorite won, and then the probability of the favorite winning, and then the names of team one and team two. So we could probably also, uh, for our purposes, get rid of money line. Oh, uh, money. Yeah, let's just leave it this way for now. So something we want to do is we want to perhaps in here in the mutate line, we want to say um, fave money payout. All right, and um, and so for this we're going to say get payout. And um, and so this would be the fit the payout for each team, right? And so the payout, so this would be uh, fave money payout one, and we'll also have uh, fave money payout two, and we're going to give it the um, money line one and money line two. That should work. And so we need to get um, make a function called get payout. So we'll do get payout function and uh, we'll call this the money line. And um, the question then is um, what is the formula for the money line? <laughs> and so um, I'm going to create a uh, so if if it's positive then, um, and we're going to assume, I'm going to just put a variable in here, say bet equals 100. So the default value of the bet is going to be $100. And so if, if it's positive, then um, the payout will be the money line. Right? So if, if you bet, if the money line is um, 150 plus 150 and you bet $100, you're going to make 150 the payout, if negative, the payout is going to be, um, so you think, so we might get like, say, minus 120. And so you have to pay $120 to make $100, okay? And so we can then say that's gonna be 100 divided by the money line. And of course we wanna make this negative. Um, and, and let's test this out think this is right. So if we do get payout, um, if I put in minus 200, then um, if I pay $200, I should then get $100. Uh, so this will be, if I then bet 100, then I should get back 50. Uh, and it doesn't say anything because I haven't written, written good R. So what we're going to do is we're going to say if else money line less than zero, then the money line is going to be, uh, the payout, sorry, is going to be minus 100 divided by money line. And if it's positive, so if it's not less than zero, then the payout will be the money line. All right, so we can get rid of all this jazz. And then we can do our get payout, this should be 50. Um, and so it's 0.5. So this is going to be the bet times 100. So, uh, and again, if we do get payout 200, we get 50 bucks back. If, if the payoff was, say, 300, then we'll get back $33.33. If, if it's plus 300, we should get back $300. Okay, so our get payout works. And um, we now uh, want to update our mutate lines. Uh, that all looks pretty good. We're going to miss an argument to function call. Oh, I must have missed that. So money prop two not found. Uh, that should be money line one, money line two. Okay. And so now we see that we've got um, fave money payout, fave money payout two. 
And um, again, if we save this as payout, I want to do payout um, select uh, date team one, team two. Fave money payout one, fave uh, money payout two, and I'm going to add um, money line and money line two. I'm good at introducing typos, aren't I? Great. So we've got um, the payouts or the money line one, uh, money line two, uh, the payout, and so yeah, if it's positive, we get that value back. If it's negative, then we get um, a number less than 100 back, generally. Okay. So the next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make this tidy, so that for every day and every game. Um, if we know the favorite, we could say from the, the other models, we can do a join between that favorite and the date, game, and team name here uh, to get back uh, the payout for that um, uh, for that for that team on that day and that game. Okay, and so we're going to um, make, we're going to like we did in the last module. We're going to do a mutate to do a um, team payout one equals something, and then team payout two equals something. So we'll do paste, and we'll do the team one, and um, I guess this, this should just be money payout one. It's not for the favorite. Uh, so money payout one, money payout two, and we'll do separate with an underscore. And I'm going to copy this. So team two, money payout two, and we're going to then do a gather, uh, and I'm going to call it um, one two. It's just going to be a dummy column that we're going to get rid of eventually. And the values is going to be team payout. And we're going to gather together team payout one and team payout two. And again, I'm going to put this on separate lines just to run so that I don't have to worry about all this jazz. And so. Um, under the select date team one team two or actually I don't want team one team two uh, I'll do that and then I'll do uh, uh, one two team payout team payout one not found Team payout. Oh, I want a team payout. Okay. So this then shows us the type of output. So the date, the one, two, we're going to drop that one, two. And we're going to then split uh, team payout now. And so then we can do separate uh, team payout into, and we're going to do team and payout. And we're going to do convert equals true. Additional pieces.
So I'm not sure what's going on. Let me simplify things because I'm going to do some of this already anyway. So I'll do select minus um, money line one minus money line two and uh, minus payout one minus payout two and minus one two. And I'm going to leave in team one and team two because I'm going to use that to help make my join specific to indicate which game it was. So we've got kind of index or make our games unique by the date, team one, team two, and the game number, as well as the scores. Payout one not found. I guess that should be money payout one. Let me pay up two. Oh, so I forgot to put in the separate value. So sep underscore. There we go. And so then we've got these three extra variables. Let's see. Great. So we see the date, the score, the game, the money probability one and two, whether or not the favorite one, the favorite money probability team one, team two, uh, the team that this is the payout for. Okay. So we're going to use team one, team two, as well as the date, the scores, and the game to grab that unique, um, that unique game, and then. Uh, if the favorite was Boston, we'll join on team as well. If it was Baltimore um, that won, then we'll grab Baltimore, and then the payout will be whatever. So something that's missing from this, however, is that we need to add back into our analysis.r file, we need to add who the favorite team was so that we know effectively who we've bid on. So I'm going to scroll back up here. And um, we're going to add um, a bunch of stuff. Not really a bunch of stuff, but a bunch of the same stuff. So, um, so if the rating prop one is bigger than rating prop two, then team one, team two. And then we want, um, I'm going to call this team. So, Fave 538 team. If we just keep track of this as we go along, the favorite one, the favorite problem, the favorite team, okay? And if we scroll down, um, okay, this is where we get the win-loss records. Uh, this is where we do the join. So we're going to then do another if else here, but again, this is team. Team one, team two, and we want to add uh, the team to the data frame. And then down here, we're going to do this a couple times again. All right. And then we're going to add a line here. Alright, and then we're going we're gonna to want to add uh, the fave WP current team and the fave WP prev team. Uh, maybe I'll break the select up a little bit so it's easier to see. So it's good I did this because I'm 
seeing what all I'd forgotten. Alright, so we need to add the team. this. We still need to do the money line model. Mm, Fave 538 team not found. Okay, so we lost that somewhere. Um, about right here. Fave 538 team. And this again is why like code readability is so important that it really helps you uh, to find bugs in your code. So again, we need to run this again. got 5381 prob team, one prob team, one prob team, one prob team. Excellent. So now we come to the money line stuff and um, we're going to add the team here. that we've added uh, one prop team for the money line. Excellent. So now we need to make this all tidy, right? And we're going to now paste together the win prop and the team. at tidy win prob we've got the season the date the game team one team two the scores the model who won um, the model type the probability and the team that was favored and um, we're going to then write this out to the TSV and so that's great and so now we can come back here and, um, and we're going to save this as our payout variable. This is where we left out. And over here we're going to want to, so now we're going to want to do an inner join between the payout data and the model data. Okay. And um, I'm going to copy this and say tidy win prob is read CSV open close parentheses but again to develop this I'm gonna hold off on assigning it to a, a variable name run that we see what it looks like and so we can do an inner join between this data frame as well as payout so we're going to do a jo join between this data frame and payout, where we're going to join on the date, the scores, the game, and we're going to then do that, but then also do a join between um, the favorite, um, which is in the team column, as well as um, the, uh, did 
the team column here. All right, so team and team. I guess we could have called this favorite or something else. Um, that's fine. It, this should work. This should work great. So we'll then do an inner join uh, of that with payout by, and we'll do date, game, team one, team two, uh, score one, score two. And I think these all need to be in quotes. Then we'll also add a team. Okay, so the team is the the favorite team in the uh, tidy data data frame, and in the payout, uh, the team is um, the the column that then corresponds to the payout amount. So if we run all this, um, I'm gonna to to make things easier to see. I'm gonna get rid of a couple things. So I'll get rid of team one, team two. Does that help? Not really. Um, I'll get rid of uh, score one, score two. Great. So we see uh, the season, the date, the game, the model, uh, whether the favorite won, the probability of them winning, the team that won, or the team that was favored, I'm sorry, um, the money probabilities, um, whether the favorite um, um, won their payout, probability of their payout. Um, so we could kind of junk a few of these, a few more of these columns, uh, but I think we generally get the idea here. Alright, so the next thing is that the payout, if if the favorite won, sorry, if the favorite didn't win, uh, actually, you know what, so I don't get too horribly confused. Um, let me look at payout again. I want to clean this up a bit. So there's a lot of stuff in here that I don't need, and I'm going to do um, select minus um, money prob one select minus money prob two and uh, fave money one and fave money prob I guess that's from up here. And I'm copied code, so this is kind of the problem with copying code, right? Uh, fave money prob not found. So fav. And so then, if I look at payout, it should be a lot simpler, right? Great. And so now, if I do this inner join, I have the season, the date, the game, team one, team two, scores, uh, I probably don't need these even, uh, the model, who won, or whether, whether the favorite by the model won, the probability of them winning, the team that won, and then the payout. So if they won, then we're going to, so if the Cubs won on um, last Sunday, then, and we bet 100 bucks, we'd get 72.50 out. Uh, San Francisco Giants lost. They were the favorite, and they lost. They were the favorite by the FT model, but they lost. So should we should lose a hundred dollars? Okay. So we need to now update this to do mutate payout equals if else um, if else one. So if that's true, then we get the payout. Otherwise, we get minus a hundred. And so we see if the favorite one is false, then we get negative $100. Okay. Awesome. So now we've joined our payout information with our model data. And what I'd like to get here is uh, I'm not so concerned about like a game by game, but maybe day by day would be a nice granularity to start to work with for our data analysis. 
And so I'm going to do a group by uh, date, game, team one, team two, um, score one, score two, or no, I'm sorry. No, I just want to do it by date. I don't want to do it by individual game. So group by date, and we're going to then um, summarize. Uh, so I'm going to group by date and model. We're going to summarize uh, and say uh, days winnings equals um, some payout. Okay. And so we see that on April 5th, I think there was one game, um, we'd lose $100 by um, most of the models, except for the WP Live, where we corrected, correctly got the winner. Um, the other thing that we want to keep track of is because you might have a horrible day, but there are many days. So we'll, we'll add cumulative winnings, and we'll do cum sum days winnings. All right. And so um, on April 6th, we've Something weird is happening. Um, so it should be 366. You know what? I think this needs to be a mutate column. A mutate uh, verb. All right, let's try that again. And that should be a pipe. All right. So 266. Hmm. So I think we're having a problem with the grouping, that we want to, we don't want to group by date, we want to keep um, grouping by the model. So do group by model, all right, so FTE 266, 366, right, great. So um, if we want to see this more clearly, we could do arrange uh, date, or do model date. Okay. And so what we see is that days winnings for the first 10 days of the season are here. And that, you know, there's a couple days in here for FTE where we made a little bit of money, <laughs> um, but then aggregated over time, uh, we see we lost a lot of money. Excellent. So we'll, we'll get rid of that. And so I'm going to then do a ungroup to get rid of all that. And we'll call this daily winnings. Okay. And so daily winnings. We get that, right? So we have date, the model, daily win days winnings, the cumulative winnings. We could also do annual winnings. And um, I think we could do, um, I'm going to uh, take daily winnings. And, or we could, I guess we could take uh, payout. So, right, payout I think has a season in it. Nope, it doesn't. So, I'm just going to take daily winnings, 
and um, I'm going to mutate date. So I'm going to mutate to make a year column, and that's going to be the year function on date. Let me just double check that that works. If we do year on that, 2018, excellent. So we mutated that. We're going to then group by uh, model and year. And then we're going to summarize um, years um, winnings equals sum daily or days winnings. And then if we look at annual winnings, we see um, the annual winnings for uh, each model by year. This You can see a lot of red. This is not looking good. Um, and then we can do total winnings, where we can then do annual winnings. And we're going to group by. Um, so we need to do an ungroup here. So we're going to group by model, and we're going to summarize um, total winnings as the sum of years winnings. And if we look at total winnings, we see we should not do this. <laughs> um, and let me let me just arrange this DSC total winnings. Okay. And so we see uh, by model that WP current, again the win probability model where we know the final uh, winning average for each team will make about $115,000. Otherwise um, by these other models we're going to lose a fair chunk of money. Um, and surprisingly the 538 is going to lose us the most over uh, that time. Whereas the win probability model will, will, will lose us uh, the least amount. <laughs> uh, so the point is, the bookies are always going to win uh, because we don't know the outcome of the season yet, right? Um, so let's see what this looks like if we were to plot it. So I'm going to take our daily winnings and pipe that to ggplot, and we'll do AES or X. I'm going to make um, be the date, um, our y is going to be uh, daily or um, daily winnings, and we're going to group by the model, and we're going to ship that to geome line. Uh, so that should be a plus sign. Pick skill for object of type blah, 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 blah. date. Oh, it should be days winnings. Okay, so this looks pretty hideous. <laughs> uh, we also want to do color equals model. Again, pretty hideous. Um, I'm going to filter to get the models that um, we're most interested in, I think. So the FTE uh, model equals equals uh, money model equals equals uh, WP current. taking so long. Maybe nothing came out of this. Oh, so a comma means and. I want the vertical pipe. So there were no data that got plot plotted. 
so we see that. And again, that looks pretty, pretty hideous. Um, I am going to do a um, a facet grid where we will do um, dot tilde season. So I'm going to make a different. Um, facet for each season. Um, at least one year later may contain must contain all variables used for faceting. Uh, and I don't have a season, do I? Right. So we want to do daily winnings, um, mutate season equals year date. And so each year is represented in a different facet, but we also still have on the x-axis everything that's going on. So we want to do um, scales equals uh, free x. So this will give each facet its own scale over time. Uh, and so this is the day's winnings. When <laughs> um, really what we want are the cumulative winnings. what we can see is this is accumulating over the years. It's not, so we didn't group by, uh, we grouped by date and not by season. So let's do mutate um, season equals year date. And we're going to group by season. Sorry. So let's ungroup this. and then group by season and model. That's what we want. And we run that. Season unknown. Mutate season equals year date. Really? You don't know what that is? So season's there. Actually, season was already there. Okay, mutate, group by model. So we have date, we don't have the season. Um, so let's group by season, date, model. Season date model, daily winnings, and then we're going to group by the season and the model to get the cumulative winnings. Where again we have the season, the date, the model, blah, blah, blah. And so if we, so that's ungrouped, right? And we can plot this. Uh, cumulative winnings. Detail daily winnings. Daily winnings. So we don't need to do this anymore because we already got that in daily winnings. AES date, cumulative winnings group model. There we go. So again, what we see is for each season, we have the cumulative winnings for those seasons. And we see that the WP current model does pretty well. The 538 model doesn't do all that great um, of, of the models. It actually did the worst when we actually went to go try to bid, bid on or bet on those predictions. Um, 
the money line. Um, if we bet on those favorites um, according to the money line, then we're going to probably lose. We are going to lose money, <laughs> um, which is to say that the the casino will make money, um, which is their thing, right? So if you're picking the favorite all the time, then you're not going to make you're not going to make your money back. So some context for this, like this this is I mean don't get me wrong, this is a lot of money. Like you're going to lose like say twelve thousand dollars, but if you think about it, in the course of a season, that each team so there's thirty teams, um, and they play 162 games divided by two because you don't want to count games twice um, and then you multiply that by a hundred that the total amount you would bid bet of course all the season would be just above 243,000 right so you got to include the postseason as well um, that 538 looks horrible here but it's it's really losing say 12,000 out of 243,000. So it's lose, you're losing 5%, um, which isn't fantastic, but um, it's not a huge fraction of, of, the, of the money you bet, okay? So finally, I want to uh, clean this up a bit, and I'm going to steal some of our styling uh, from before for our betting simulations. where we will do breaks of FTE money, WB current. Yep, that's great. Um, our x-axis will be date, y will be winnings. Uh, so I'm going to say don't gamble based on the model's predictions. All data since 2009. I'm going to also add theme classic and um, I'm also going to add let's run that make sure it looks good nice and I'm going to add a horizontal line across the middle so I will do geom, um, geom h line aes um, intercept equals zero I think it's supposed to be y intercept Boom. Very nice. And just kick this over a notch to make it more readable. And we're done. Great. So I hope you enjoyed following along with me um, what we've been doing. I'm going to finish up here by committing our changes. Simulate betting on favorites. Closes. Closes number six. Number six. Uh, and I've saved that. I'll get checkout. go back to get checkout That looks right. I've saved it. I'm going to close it. Again, go to terminal. Check out master. Get merge. Betting. And then get push. And go back to our issue tracker. And we've done that, 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 that and the issue's been closed. Fantastic. Well, 
there's clearly a lot more we could do. Um, I hope this series of demos has been helpful in seeing how you can use our statistics, our statistical software, uh, to program data analyses to try to validate different models. Um, I think the, the ELO model seems to be a great model for predicting winners and losers. It just so happens that when you then apply that to the actual betting lines for the individual games, uh, that you'll, you're going to lose money. But again, remember, the, the, the game's fixed, right? Like the betting, uh, the casinos know how to make money. Um, and so it's impossible to make money doing this. But um, it does a pretty good job of making predictions. The estimates of the actual win probability were a little too conservative. Um, I don't think that affects how much money you're going to make. Um, but uh, again, thinking back about uh, the 2016 election and whether or not the model was right, the challenge is that we only have one game. We only have one iteration of that election. And so we don't know whether or not the model was correct. Um, if Hillary had won, we still wouldn't know if the model was correct. Right? And so um, the, the beauty of sports data is that we can validate these models. And we could do the same thing uh, with, with basketball or football or anything else. So thanks again for hanging out with me and doing this analysis during All-Star break. And talk to you soon.